Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're back with another genetics video today. Uh, I know after watching that last video on polygenetics, you guys said, wow, that's really, really great. And that's so fascinating that multiple genes can influence a single trait. But Bortz, I really want to put that into a Punnett square. And since I know you're all dying to learn how to put that into a Punnett square, I wanted to show you an example of how we could do that. Um, and so when we're doing Punnett squares with more than one trait, realistically, we're, we're just doing the same thing with bigger. Um, but there's going to be more moving pieces, so it's really important that we stay organized, okay? Um, so something, until you get a little bit more comfortable with doing these Punnett squares, um, I want to encourage you to actually use two colors here. Um, I want you to use one color uh, for the first trait we're looking at, and one color for the second trait you're looking at. Um, the same process works with bigger Punnett squares if you want to look at three or four traits at once, um, but that can get a little time consuming. So if you don't, if for this class, we're just going to stick to two traits. Okay, so I want to imagine, uh, let's look at a blood type again. Um, so we're going to start um, by looking, let's say, at one person who has blood type um, A, and we're going to say their blood type A. All right, uh, but we know when we go to put things into a Punnett square, we don't actually want to know the person's phenotype. We want to know their genotype, right? So if we're going to put something into a Punnett square, we have to know whether this person is AA or AO. Um, just for the sake of argument here, we're going to say this first person is AO. Okay. Um, and then since we're doing a two-trait Punnett square, or some people call this a dihybrid cross, um, we need to look at the other trait too, right? So we want to know if they're positive or negative. We're going to say this person is positive, okay? And they're going to be heterozygous, so they're going to be, um, they're going to have one positive allele and one negative allele, all right? And this person, I'm going to use black, um, just for like all the non-allele stuff. This person is going to, that little X means a cross, um, or a mating cross, um, which you would say if you were an evolutionary biologist. Um, and so this person is going to have a kid with another person, right? Um, mm -hmm. So once again, we're going to do the, uh, the letter type in green. Um, so let's say this person is type A... B. Okay, so this person's type AB, um, and we'll say they are... Rh negative, right? So they have two negatives. All right. Um, and so when we go to put these things into a Punnett square, there's there's an extra step now um, because we're looking at these two different traits, and we want to know how those two different traits are going to be passed together, right? We have to think. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, right? This is the male parent. And let's say this is the female parent. Doesn't really matter which is which. Um, so when this male parent goes to make sperm cells, right, we don't know whether this male parent, right, let's say this little inside of one of our little brackets here is a sperm cell. We don't know whether this parent is going to pass on A or O, right? So some of the sperm cells are going to have A, and then some of the sperm cells... are going to have O. All right. And so this A right here, and then the same thing we're going to look at for this, um, the second trait here, right? So, but what we have to keep into account is what we have to keep into account is how these traits are passed on together. Uh, so this A, right, is passed on randomly. And this plus is passed on randomly too, right? 
So the man could make a sperm cell that has an A and a plus. Or the man could make a sperm cell that has an, oh yeah, we're going to use a different color here, uh, that has an A and a negative. And the same thing for the O. We could have the O, right, the man could pass on an O, um, and a plus. Or the man could pass on an O and a negative, right? So previously, when we looked at Punnett squares, there were only two options the man could pass on. Um, but here, there's actually uh, four options the man could pass on. Okay, and we got to do the same thing uh, for the female. Um, so this female could make... There's always going to be four different options. Okay, and I want to show you a little trick um, that you can use to figure out what all these, what the four options are uh, without really having to think about it, right? You can just look at this, and if you're kind of math-minded, you could figure out all the different possible combinations. And, um, but if you're not, uh, you can use what you might be familiar with with mathematics, and I'm going to kind of flip the page here real quick um, and show you another option. Oh, we got a little imprint from the previous page. Um, but you can actually use the FOIL method here um, to figure out all the different uh, combinations, right? So if you're familiar with math, the FOIL method, we have the first, outer, inner, last. Um, now, let me just check and see what mom's. A, B, negative, negative. Okay, now if you, um, A, are familiar with the FOIL method, um, or B, you can just look at this thing and figure out what all the sperm and egg cell combinations are. You can fast forward through this part. Um, but for those of you who are struggling, if you're trying to figure out what all the possible sperm or egg cells this person could make, um, you just use the FOIL method, right? And FOIL stands for first. Outer. Inner. Last. And I'll actually write that out nicely somewhere, right? So FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. And then what you can do is you can take the first two alleles from each gene, right? So the first two are going to be the big A, right? The first one that's in the first place, All right? So we have big A and a minus sign, All right? So that's our first possible sperm cell. Then our second possible sperm cell, we look at the outer ones too, right? So the ones that are farthest on the outside, um, which again is going to be A and minus. Um, put the A in the wrong color. Okay, and then we look at the inner. So these are the two in the middle, right? The inside one. So once, so it's going to be the B and the minus, right? The B and the minus. Keep forgetting to use the right colors. Let's see if we can get that looking green. Um, and then the last one, we have the last two, right? So the last gamete. Or sorry, the last allele and the last allele, right? So the B and the minus. Um, so you can figure this out either way. If you just have the kind of brain that can look at these and tell what the, all the combinations are, you can just figure it out. Um, or if you want to use the FOIL method, you can do that too. Um, so let's just fill in all the possible alleles we could have. Or sorry, the, all the possible gametes we could have um, for the mom. Okay, I mean, I'm going to show like the full version of this Punnett square. Uh, once you get good at these, if you notice any doubles, um, you don't actually have to do it twice, right? If you, so if you know what this means, that's great. And just follow this advice and 
But if you want to do the whole Punnett square, do the whole Punnett square. Okay. Um, but if you notice that like there's two A negatives and there's two B negatives, um, you only have to do put each one onto the Punnett square one time, um, and you'll still get the ratios because math is cool and it works that way. Okay. Um. So now this is just like a regular Punnett square. Um, the only thing is now we have four things we're putting on each side instead of two things we're putting on each side. All right, so we need four boxes. So we need one, two, three, four. And I'll try to make my lines as straight as I can here, but that's not really my forte. We'll see, maybe like one, two, three lines, one, two, three lines. And so we'll call this, this will be our like four by four Punnett square. And it's gonna, we're gonna fill it in exactly like we'd fill in any other Punnett square. Um, except now we are going to use more letters. Um, so we just take all of these and we put them at the boxes at the top. And so we can have A, A, Oh, um, and then here we can have A, A, B, B, um, and then here we'd have plus, minus, plus, minus, and then here we have minus, 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 minus. Okay, so I'm just taking these alleles from here and aligning them onto the Punnett square. And then we just fill in a Punnett square like we normally would. So we look at these two and we say they both fit in this box. Okay, so this has an A and this has an A and then this has a plus and this has a minus. Um, and then we go over to this one and we say, okay, here's an A and here's another A then here's a minus, and here's a minus, and here's an A, here's an O, here's a plus, here's a minus, um, here's an A, there's an O, there's a minus, and then a minus. Okay, so I'm gonna, just going to fill in, I'm going to cut um, to me with this whole table filled in. Okay, if you're still struggling um, to fill in these tables, you should go back uh, and review a more basic Punnett squares video. All right, um, so we'll I'll cut to in one second when I have this whole table filled out. So now that we have the table filled in, um, we can look at all the genotype and we can all look at all the phenotype ratios. Um, as you can see, just looking at here, there's a lot, this is gonna be a lot more time consuming, right? So let's look at our first genotype. Okay, I'm just gonna write G for genotype. When we go to make percentages of all the genotypes, we now first we have to figure out, okay, how many of these are A, A plus minus? Okay, so here's one of them. Here's two of them, okay? So two out of 16, two sixteenths are going to be A, A plus minus. Okay, and then we gotta look at the next genotype, okay? So here's A, A minus so I forgot to put the ratio. We have two sixteenths of them are going to be A, A minus, minus. Um, and then we look and we find the next genotype. So we have A, O. And once again, I think two sixteenths. All of these are going to be two sixteenths in this particular example. Um, and I'm not going to write down all the genotype ratios here. Uh, but you can see where this starts to get a little bit um, more time consuming. Um, and then when you go to find the phenotypes, now it's going to be even a little bit more time consuming, right? Because we have to remember that if you look at, well, there's nothing like plus plus in here. So if you look at these, 
right? They have the different genotypes, but they're going to have the same phenotype, right? Um, so when we go to look to see how many have the phenotype A positive, for example, uh, we got to count out a bunch of them, right? So this one's going to have A positive. Uh, this one's going to have A positive. This one's going to have A positive in this one, right? So all of a sudden now we have two sixteenths. Or sorry, I can count basically. We have four sixteenths of these are going to have the, the phenotype A positive. Okay, so you got to be a little bit more specific um, with finding these ratios, right? And it's why for a big one like this, usually you wouldn't be asked to find all of the genotypes and all of the phenotypes, right? Because it takes forever to comb through this table um, and figure that out. Um, so it, these tables are used a little bit more to find um, more specifically, like if you want to to ask a question like, what are the odds of a person having um, AB negative blood? So you could go through two here and you could be like, okay, if only two out of 16 um, are likely to be A negative. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you still have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Let me know. Uh, good luck with these dihybrid crosses.